Hey everybody, sweaty man because he cannot cope with the 31 degrees centigrade that it is currently in a weird type of summer we are having. I did a Pimax 8KX update after about a year video and I was also talking about like head physics. Then I figured well that's kind of a separate topic so this is a separate video, short video looking at the problems with strap-ons. Let's not call it that. Just some of the issues that make VR uncomfortable. I do not really have a solution, but maybe simple analysis of what happens might maybe that's informative to some VR users there. I will talk about the straps, the straps that do a lot and the straps that don't do a lot and some of the issues involved. So maybe this interests you. Let's, uh, let's roll the tape. A fairly nice drawing, if I may say so, with a crude Pimax here. Will this just sit on your head? Well, let's look at a couple of important things. The headset will have a center of gravity. That's the circle there with the little arrow pointing down. And it, not just that, it will also be supported somewhere on your face here. So it also wants to tilt forward. We have a force pointing down and a moment sort of twisting away from your face. And this is what it might look like just before a very expensive headset falls to the ground. So we need to support this somehow, but how do we do that and what are the pros and cons? The first thing you could do is add like this, this purple strap from front to back and give it some tension. However, that does not directly support this vertical weight. So we are not having the tension in the right direction. We are not lifting, like lifting it straight up from here, which would be the, the simplest, but this strap is back to front tension and then we rely on friction on the front of your head. I've drawn it as a simple dotted line. It was sort of a complicated shape around your face. That friction might stop it from falling down. So we need tension there. And that's the thing you see most with VR people that always adjust the tension and squeeze it against their face, which is not very comfortable, but kind of necessary. We don't know what this friction is, but let's say it's probably, it might be more, I don't know, let's say it's a half, right? So we have a tension of one and we try to support the weight of the headset. And I'm forgetting that cantilevering thing. I'm just looking at the weight of the headset, a weight of one. We have to support that and we try a tension of one, it gives us a friction, which we don't know, but it's half. So the result is we have a friction that's only resisting half and we need a force of one. So the headset will f let rest on your nose and move down. That's not very comfortable. So we increase the tension. So you could think increasing the tension to two gives us a friction of one, supporting the weight of the headset. And now it is supported and it's pressing into our, into our forehead with a force of two. So two headsets is one and a half kilos in, in the case of the Pimax. So that's not comfortable, but that would theoretically remove the downward weight of, of the headset. However, then we do another thing, looking up and down, of course, bumps uh, when you're racing or you, you look at, know, at a screen or, or in a mirror, you're, you're moving your head and that means you're accelerating. So what happens if you look down and then you sort of have impulse, you look up, that's a pretty quick acceleration of your head. And then that weight, which sits in front of you is also going up. And if you paid attention in school, that creates an extra force. We are accelerating a weight and the force that it's needed is proportional to the weight of that thing, the proportional to the weight of your headset. So the quicker you look up, the more you accelerate your, your neck, the more effective weight that headset will have. So it could very well be that an impulse lookup makes the weight uh, of the headset go up by a factor of two. And what happens then, we have that tension of two, giving us that friction of one in just about enough to support the static weight of the headset, but we're always bumping around and accelerating. So the heavier the headset is, the more that will affect uh, the force needed with this friction to keep up. And now moving it up, the effective weight of the headset may have become two. Our friction is one. It will again rest on our nose and move down. So what can happen is, we need a tension of four, just an arbitrary number, to support a weight of one. Because of that acceleration, it might double the effective weight of the headset. And we need that friction then of two because with accelerations, the headset might weigh two. So we need quite a bit of force on uh, clamping it towards yourself. And that's what you see a lot of people do in VR. They always tighten that up. I've heard people doing it so tight that the straps break. 
Uh, that's the main thing you need and a great deal of it comes from not keeping your head perfectly still but shaking it a little bit and then sort of it doesn't feel tight on your on your face even though the static weight is supported the dynamic weight isn't most headsets also have a, a top strap like that which sounds very logical but also has some issues first of all this is sort of roughly and this you know you are talking about human flesh it's all a bit squishy and and, and, and wobbly it's a bit hard to be exact about and that's probably uh, why it's difficult for manufacturers to get this right but let's say we only have this top strap and we want to support a weight of one this headset but it's at an angle and do the maths on the angle let's say you need about a tension in this top strap of about 1.5 so this goes over your head to the back somewhere but you still have to pull down 1.5 here to support the headset weight of one your head ha does it have friction yet yeah, it's your hair it doesn't have a lot of friction i don't think it's quite smooth and we're not hooking behind anything here so the friction i think is fairly low but it won't be zero one solution is to just connect a weight to the back of that strap in this case 1.5 because of that angle we are pulling at and then the headset will be held up which is quite nice but we have an extra weight here and that's the kicker with with uh what i'm not really going into much detail here weight is terrible because it adds inertia when you rotate you rotate from your neck here so you're swinging the weight around and that's exactly when looking up and down it increases the effective weight of the headset so adding more weight a balanced weight to the back means that if you move your head quickly that weight doesn't want to move quickly it will try to stay in position so you will get that annoying effect of holding your hand in front of the microphone but you move your head but the headset doesn't move with you giving you only more sort of incentive to further tighten it up so a ballast weight is not i don't think is necessarily a great idea it can support statically the weight quite well but as soon as you're moving around more weight is just like lotus and lightness is better so yes this way you can support the vertical weight and it won't drop down on your nose but hanging away from there is not not great what about the combination strap that you often see so we have the top strap and also this earlier strap that we have here let's say we give it a tension of one so we have a friction of half here which means we have half left because half of a headset isn't enough to keep it up there so in order to pull it up by a factor of one half, we have to pull 0.75. And this goes to the back of your head and is now a force 0.75 pulling up, like lifting it off your head like that. So the reason why I find these top straps, they don't do a huge amount, because if you don't have enough tension, it will sort of fall forwards and, and pull that strap down and on the back of your head pull it up the recommended way to wear your headset and this is roughly how it might look is something like this so you you, put, you have the top strap but you make it go down in your neck as, as deep as possible uh, however when it's shaped like that the forces don't really go like that to my best understanding which is uh, dubious maybe the force will go in a straight line if this is sort of the point where it anchors you can make a bend in in the in, in, the, in that strap but the force goes from here to there which introduces a downward component and it also reduces the tension a little bit so if that tension is one we have 0.4 ish in this drawing it's not perfectly to scale 0.4 pulling down and 0.9 pulling towards you which means with a tension of one we only have a friction of 0.45 because now we have a pull force of 0.9 instead of one and a pull down force of 0.4 so we are already almost pulling the headset down even if it would weigh nothing and we have the weight of the headset so this will still rest on your on your nose more and of course there is a little bit of friction everywhere and the head is squishy it's really complicated but i think it's a reasonable sort of simplified approach to see some of the issues with how you strap it on what i think sort of effectively happens and why yes it does seem to feel a little bit better the more you can get this low in your neck is that your head your neck is a bit squishy so what you get here i've sort of maybe not drawn it very comfortably but it sort of pulls into your into your neck a little bit and then it becomes sort of, sort of like an anchor point so this is your neck and this is the strap 
pulling that way but it's it, it can't go there because it's sort of anchored in because it's pulled forward a little bit and pulled, pulled back and upwards a little bit but this is fairly stable if we pull down on the front here we just you know we can't really move there we sort of have to go over that neck thingy there so that's why this is probably a reasonably good way to to wear your headset but it's still it's still not super ideal because the forces here you have to move them and it's, it's all squishy and wobbly so what ends up happening with easily happening anyway is you you tighten it up because you tend to rely on a lot of force pressing it into your face to generate enough friction so it doesn't wobble around too much now i'm only looking at a side view of of, of your face like that but of course you don't do this all the time you also do that so you have rotation in that axis and you might yaw so you can move in three directions left right forward back up down this one that one and oh, oh my neck in all these motions you have to look at how is the headset strapped and supported but i think this side view is the most important and i'm just highlighting some of the potential issues it's 31 degrees and i'm putting on my headset now so what I feel is if I remove this top strap, not that much, yeah, it does rest a bit more on my nose. But if I try to tighten this very much, it will also have an effect of pulling it up on the back, which makes me almost want to dial in more force this way, have it tighter, pulling it towards my face to stop it doing that. So this top strap, while it has, adds a little bit of support, isn't magic because it's not really supported. So what I thought about is having something on the back, like maybe attached to, well, in this case, this shirt isn't very good or surgically implanted. Maybe that might be a good idea to pull it down somewhere because that will relieve the strain. This is far more comfortable pulling down at the back and actually relieves the pressure from my nose. But in order to achieve that, by tightening this one, it will just pull up. So all you almost you can do is tighten this forward to back, clamping it towards your face, which is not really comfortable. So this is how you're not supposed to do it, because now it's not going into my neck. And to be honest, the difference is fair, fairly small. It's a little bit worse, but I'm still relying mostly on pulling it towards my face. And this top strap, after an hour, I'm sure it will do something, but it's not great. But yeah, it does make a difference. You already see an issue with my, oh, where's the strap? I've lost my strap on. Doing it more like this is a little bit better because we are hooking into the neck a little bit and that makes it a little harder for it to slide up. But you can see, you know, my skin isn't firmly attached to my skull. Maybe there is a VR surgery process I'm not aware of, but it's not very comfortable, I don't think. So there is always this movement simply because these straps have some wobble because your skin has some wobble versus your skull. So this is, tends to be fairly sort of uncomfortable already. There is no way I can see to comfortably wear a heavy headset like that because the strap effectively can only pull it into your face providing friction oh that's hot friction on a large area pressing it into your face but the, the top strap helps a little bit but it's it's just not ideal so now i have the front to back straps really loose and i will demonstrate that tightening the top strap doesn't really work let's let's tighten it and that's you know it takes almost nothing to pull it back up because we do not have enough friction here on the head on the top of the head and on the back to, to counteract this pulling down on this top strap which will pull up on the rear and there's not enough friction and there's no hook we're not hooking directly behind and even the bottom of the neck isn't really a nice sort of hooking point so with this it seems comfortable but it, it sort of easily cr creeps up and that's why I would need more tension in the front to back strap. Oh, it's really, it's still really hot. <laughs> I need more tension front to back. And that's the main thing in with all VR headsets, I think. That's the one you tighten 
but then you press it into your face, which is not great. So while that may have been a video you didn't ask for and therefore didn't watch, um, maybe it provides some insight and it's incomplete and do correct my mistakes in the comments, that's why we have them. Um, and for spam, obviously. So maybe interesting to see what sort of issues you get with strapping on your headset and how unideal it tends to be with the way that the straps are currently designed. And I've only looked at the side view of the head, there's a lot more to it as well. But I just felt like maybe the explanation of why that top strap doesn't seem to do a lot, maybe that was insightful. Anyway, um, if you did find it insightful, then that's great. So I might see you later. Bye bye.